Lab's role at the HSA is that we offer paternity testing, we offer DNA, which is part of the DNA services, we offer drug testing, so when individuals come for pre-employment drug screening, they come here. We also offer services for drug rehabilitation for clients, and we have other services which include clients such as the RCIPS and CBC, Customs Border Control, and the Judiciary, so the courts. It's important for Cayman to have a forensics lab because, because of the services I just mentioned, but also in more recent events with the need for COVID testing, we already had the majority of the equipment required so that we just had to train lab personnel to do the protocols required for the COVID PCR testing. So once the pandemic hit us last year, we weren't scrambling to send any um, samples overseas or anything like that. We were able to provide testing on island and we've worked it so that you can get your PCR test done within 24 hours. So we, you, you no longer, you didn't have to worry about sending them overseas, having a long wait time or anything like that. And also we, we, we can also extend our services to other jurisdictions within the Caribbean. We, we provide DNA testing services for cases that come from Belize. We can provide to other other Caribbean islands that don't have a functioning forensic DNA lab. So being accredited and being within the hospital here in Cayman has pushed us very far ahead of the curve. So having the forensics lab here at the HSA is very beneficial to the average person because when they come to do their regular, for example, government medical for their pre-employment, they just come down the hallway and they have their drug screening done down here as well as you know x-rays and their blood work and so on in addition to that we can offer paternity testing which before our lab was up and running we had to send those overseas which took probably up to a month possibly to get back but we offer it within you know two to three weeks turnaround time so that's very beneficial for for patients or clients who are looking to have paternity done for say immigration purposes and they're you know they, they're rushing to get that paperwork in also because we offer um, drug chemistry when it comes to any cases that come in for the RCIPS they don't have to worry about sending any of that overseas it is done here on island therefore the judiciary system can tend to those cases in a speedily manner. In addition to, to, the, to what I just mentioned, it's also a cost savings to the, to the patients and the clients that come in because we offer it on island versus having it sent overseas. I was inspired by the forensic scientist that was here. Um, his name was Dr. David Shadell. I came as a summer intern when I had just finished high school, not knowing anything about the department. It was pre-CSI Las Vegas type TV shows. And I was blown away by the, the lab work that we did here, they did here. I, it was 
so interesting um, and I'm a hands-on type of person. I realized my passion was doing lab laboratory work, doing chemistry, doing DNA, um, well, like when I was in university. So it was always refreshing every morning coming into the lab and I enjoyed it thoroughly. And it's important for females to get into this into, into these roles because no longer is it just thought of as only men can do this. We can all do this. If we put our minds to it, we can all do science. Coming here as a summer intern really opened up my eyes and I really am an advocate for HSA summer internship program that they put on every year. We currently have had about four or five interns come through our lab just this summer with three or more to come next week. And it's been a joy to see the Caymanians, the young adults coming into our lab and learning and getting hands-on experience. And some of them have even said, wow, I never thought I would enjoy science and now I'm rethinking what I'm going to go off to study. And it, it warms my heart to know that we are paving the way for them to know that they, they, there are other fields of interest within the hospital. It's not just doctors and nurses, but there are other departments here. And it is a great internship program that they put on. And I look forward to meeting more interns and hoping to inspire them to come back home to Cayman and work within the HSA. So I decided to become a medical biologist because, um, well, that was my undergraduate degree that I was studying at the time, and I was flipping between doing that and law. Um, but I had a lot of uh, friends who were in medicine, and I had kind of medical journey and one of the things that I noticed was that genetics sort of played an understated role in medicine and so I decided to investigate that a little bit more because I figured if genetics is the cause for so many diseases why doesn't it feature as a bigger part of medical care and so when I sort of went and, and met people who are doing that sort of work where they're intersecting genetics into healthcare, I realized that this is a big issue at the forefront of molecular biology and it was very exciting and so I got pulled into that direction and decided like that's what I wanted to do. So my role in the lab is um, I'm the leader of the genome sequencing project at HSA. So essentially we have two um, machines donated by the R3 Foundation and that's the Alumna MySeq um, to my left and then the Oxford Nanopore MinION. And the primary purpose of these machines is to determine the strains the variants of COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 um, and then inform public health and the CMO and then the sort of secondary and tertiary purposes of the machine are for public health initiatives so breast cancer screening, newborn screening and then eventually things like coral research and, and so on. So my, my role is to develop the protocols and the techniques for being able to perform those services locally. So I've kind of used my primary role here to train young Caymanians. So in the last, I'd say two months, I've trained five and we're currently training a couple more because um, I feel like molecular science, life sciences in general, um, are very, uh, very small part of the kind of scope of the Cayman Islands at the moment. And a lot of people don't consider those career paths in Cayman. So being able to at least highlight that the lab is here and that we're doing um, you know, very advanced techniques and you can make a career out of this sort of work, I think is a primary uh, purpose uh, I found in this role. Um, so my average day would be, uh, I mean, there, there are kind of two answers to this. <laughs> One is that, you know, you have a sort of normal nine to five, which happens occasionally and then the other is I'll come in to the lab, um, perform the PCR COVID testing with my colleagues and then we would prepare for batching the next week of sequencing. So every week we perform sequencing runs 
and we have to determine which samples to put on which batch. Um, basically, it's, it's a process of organization, but also a bit of an investigative process because you have to have reasons for sequencing um, certain things. Otherwise, the value of it may not be as useful as sequencing other um, viral samples. So in terms of doing that, and then from the previous run, I analyzed the data and put that into a results spreadsheet and send that to public health and the CMO. Um, the other aspect of, of my work throughout the day is to develop uh, standard operating procedures for new testing services we're trying to get online. So the breast cancer sequencing um, and the coral sequencing in particular. Um, and that, that takes a, a lot of uh, kind of research and discussion with other collaborating labs um, in, in other parts of the world um, to see what would work best here for what we're trying to do. It's important to have Caymanians in these types of careers because at the moment uh, there is a very limited scope for the career paths that a lot of Caymanians can, can look to get into and so it's very competitive um, because we also bring in expertise around the world at that level. And so being able to compete on a world stage um, in your own country is a very daunting task. And for at least from Cayman's perspective, um, if we were able to expand life sciences into potentially another industry, then that would give Caymanians another avenue for, in terms of searching for their careers. It also allowed them to go and get this like have the skills here to go overseas and get careers in other labs. Um, so it opens the door for a lot of potential um, career pathways, really. I'm not sure if the, it could be understated, really, the importance, because if we didn't have the ability to test for the virus or do so in a very fast turnaround time, um, then our ability to tackle um, and understand the spread of the virus throughout the island would just be be very very poor and so having that sort of insight into the, the spread and being able to contact trace and determine if someone's positive or negative within a few hours has allowed public health and government to have the sort of amazing responses that we've seen so that we can all kind of no more or less resume a normal life over the last year so the capability of the lab to meet those challenges has enabled us to have you know, the kind of situation we're in right now. And that's the whole idea of the genome sequencing is that in the event of certain things happening, right, we can, we have another level of reassurance to be able to determine the movement of the virus between individuals that are positive, if it should ever happen. Um, and also be able to make um, effective policy changes based on the kind of variants we're seeing being spread you know, the nature of the, that type of spread. Is it something that's happening at a faster rate than we've seen before? Is it something that's breaking through vaccine efficacy? Those things, and that will guide um, policies with respect to bringing people here and allowing free movement. Um, so it's, it's really critical to have a, a good lab set up and an adaptive lab response when it comes to pandemics and public health screening in general. I knew I wanted to have a career in this field because I knew it would be a field that would allow me to use a lot of the skills that I learned during my studies, while also allowing me to expand um, my skill set by learning new skills in the field of forensics, um, and while also being able to interact with and work with members of my community, and really just exploring the career options that are available in the forensics field and figuring out what it is that I really want to do. I honestly love seeing Caymanian women in the field of science. I feel like science especially it was such a male-dominated industry um, and I really love being able to see women but especially Caymanian women because for a long time it was a lot of um, men and also non-Caymanian men that were dominating the science field here in Cayman. So it's really empowering and really special to see Caymanian women uh, pursuing more careers in STEM. I would say I haven't been working here long, but this work has definitely taken me out of my comfort zone, but in a really good way. I think I was used to working in a lab, you know, with test tubes and 
not really interacting with people as much, but now there's a lot more um, patient contact in what I do. And I think it has really helped me open my eyes and it's something that I realized that I actually really enjoy doing. So I definitely say it did take me out of my comfort zone, but in a really great way. I would, I would really, really encourage more people to consider a career in forensics. I think it's, some, it's a field that's often overlooked. Even when people do pursue STEM uh, careers, I think it's a field that a lot of people would be very interested in. And again, it's really rewarding and fulfilling to be able to interact with members of your community and to help out. Thank you for watching GIS Spotlight. For more info, visit us on www.gis.gov.ky. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Flickr, Twitter, and YouTube. This is a production of GIS Marketing and Communications.